Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you here today on what the world needs is Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Friend, I, I'm just so proud that you tuned in with us today and so glad to have uh, Brother Larry with us. Brother Ricky, he's with us. Our singers. We got, I think we got tradition going to be singing and we got Paul and New Creation going to be. I, I appreciate all this help. Amen. All these folks that come down and just want to do something for Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad today to know that I'm a born-again child of the living God. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad today to know that I can worship and praise a live God. Amen. He's not dead. My God's not dead. He's alive. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. I'm glad today I'm serving a live God. I'm glad today that the God I'm serving, He's not dead. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you need. And the Bible says that He knows what you need before we even ask. But He said, Brother Larry, first to ask. Uh -huh. Woo, glory. And He said to us, when we ask to believe. Amen. Have faith. Believe that He's going to do what he said for us to do. Yes, Amen. He said, if, it, if my words abide in you and you abide in my words, you can ask what you will and it shall, positive statement there, it shall be done. Friend, let me tell you something. We need to just learn to go to the Lord Jesus. Amen. We need to learn to go to the Lord when we've got problems. Amen. Instead of trying to go to the world and let the world work them out. Amen. We just need to go to God. You know what? This right here, this word of God right here. Yes. That right there has got every answer that you need. Where's it at, Brother Ronnie? I don't know. You've got to find that now. That's up to you. That's where it comes. That's where it gets on you right there. Hey, Amen. You've got to find it. You've got to go to that word. But you know what? God will lead you to it. If you'll pray and seek God, God will lead you to your answer. Amen. You can get the answer that you need. Folks, if you'd like to watch us on the web, you can watch us on YouTube. Uh, uh, go to WOLW's video playlist on YouTube. Uh, W-O-L-W and go to their video playlist and uh, look up what the world needs is Jesus. Yeah. We also got some other ones on there. There's some other yeah. uh, programs on our church programs, churches. There's some churches on there, some preachers on there that's uh, on our preacher. I mean, you can just pick out what you like and just watch it. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Just have church with them. Glory to God. You can also find us on uh, Facebook, we got a Facebook page, What the World Needs is Jesus. Just go to Facebook, look up What the World Needs is Jesus, and uh, usually uh, uh, Brother Tobin, Ricky's son, he, he usually puts every Sunday morning, he usually puts our video on, the, on, on Facebook, so you can go to our Facebook page and, and click on the video there and watch the video. If you'd, if you'd like to, or you'd go on down and read the scriptures and stuff that, that Sister Sharon puts on. We appreciate you today, and I hope that God just blesses you. I, you know what? If you're not saved, on, I'd like for you to just go ahead and get saved right yes, now. Sir. Just go ahead and pray. Seek God. Ask God to come into your life. And you know what? If you will do that, I guarantee you that you will enjoy this program a whole lot more than what you do now. Now we want you to worship with Brother Ricky as he comes around and brings us the Word of God. Hey, man, thank you, Brother Ronnie. I'd just like to say I love the Lord today. And if you're not saved, hey, man, that's the most important thing you need to do. Hey, man, that's the first thing you need to take care of is go on and get saved. Hey, man, we love the Lord today. We love you and hope that, hope that we can say something that will help you today. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Amen. I'd like to read a few scriptures today from Luke chapter 18. Hey, man, and it says... Two men went up into the temple to pray. Amen. One was a Pharisee and one was a publican. That's right. Come on. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not like, that I'm not as these other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Amen. I, I believe this old Pharisee here is bragging on himself, don't you? Amen. I believe, he, I believe he's trying to make everything look good on his side. Amen. He says, I fast twice a week. Yeah, I give tithes of all that I possess. Amen. He, he's bragging on himself, telling how good he is, making everybody look to him. Amen. And this publican, standing off, uh, far off, amen, Come on now. would not even lift so much as his eyes up to heaven. Amen. Glory to God for that publican. Amen. He wouldn't even lift his eyes to heaven, and he smote himself upon the breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. That's where it's at 
We got to forget about all the bragging and all that and, and get right down to God. Amen. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Amen. For everyone that exalteth himself, everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Amen. Glory to God. That tells us the story right there. Amen. Amen. Now let's go back a few chapters here to uh, 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 Matthew chapter 6. Jesus is telling them here, he says, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Amen. Do not. Amen. Alms is, is, is money that's given out out of mercy for the poor. Amen. The, the, Israel, the Israelite was commanded to be generous to the poor and the needy. Amen. He commanded them to be generous to the poor and the needy. Amen. Deuteronomy 15 says, If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, yeah, thou shalt not harden thine heart. Amen. Thou shalt not harden thine heart, Amen. nor shut thine hand from, from thy poor brother. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, we got to help one another. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Thou shalt surely give him, and thine heart shall not be grieved. Amen. That's telling us, Amen. Glory to God, we got to give and not, not be sorrowful that we're giving or not be grieved because we had to give. Amen. We got to give abundantly, wanting to give. Amen. When we help someone, we shouldn't do it to be seen. Amen. We shouldn't do it so so and so says and say, Hey, he gives money, he gives this, or he gives that. I mean, we shouldn't do it to be seen. Amen. Or, or, or to say, look what I've done. Amen. Don't do it to say, look what I've done. Yeah. We got to give out of, the, out of our heart. Amen. Or, or, or don't even do it to talk about that person. Come on, Sometimes we do it just to get to talk about that person and say, well, I had to help so and so because they're all down here and they're, they're not making it. Amen. And I'm up here, a big rich man, and I had to help them. Yeah. Amen. That ain't right. Amen. No. I, you know, God, God don't want us to brag about it. God wants us to help, help these people. But God don't want us to brag about it, amen. Jesus said, otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven, amen. If you're helping someone out because you want to be seen of people, that's going to be your reward right here on this earth, amen. Right here, you're getting it right there. You don't get no reward in heaven, amen. It makes you look big in front of everybody. That's going to be your reward, amen. That, that's exactly right, amen. God, God wants us to give willingly, amen. Jesus said, therefore, when thou, when thou doest thou alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, amen. Don't sound that trumpet. Don't, don't say, hey, look at me. I'm, I'm giving alms, amen. Jesus said that's how the hypocrites in the synagogues did, amen, in the streets, to be seen of men, and their reward was right there because God will not reward them in heaven. Amen? God just won't do it. God wants us to help each other, but he don't want us to brag about it. Amen? That's pretty simple, isn't it? God don't want, it. God don't want us to brag about it. Don't want us to brag on ourselves. Amen? Glory to God. He says, he says do thy alms, and don't let the left hand know what the right hand's doing. Amen? Matter of the fact, matter of the fact, Jesus said, do your alms in secret, amen? Yeah. The, Father, the Father seeth in secret, and he will reward yeah. you openly, yeah. amen? Openly, yeah. glory to God. That's how, we got, that's how we need to get our reward is from God, not from man, yeah. amen? We need to get our reward from God, amen? Yeah. Jesus says in Matthew 25, he said, I was hungry, I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in, yeah. glory to God. Yeah. Naked and you clothed me, and I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison. Glory to God. I was in prison and you came unto me. Amen. The righteous said, when did we do all this? When did we see you hungry and feed you and give you drink and, and you was a stranger and we clothed you and sick in prison? Amen. They didn't even realize what they had done. Amen. They didn't even realize it. Amen. All that Jesus, they had done all this for these other people. But they're doing it for Jesus because Jesus, Jesus is the way. Amen. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these brethren, of, of the least of these brethren, ye have done it unto me. Amen. They don't run around, they didn't run around bragging about it. They just done it. Amen. 
And Jesus said, doing it to the least of these brethren is just like doing it unto me. Amen. That's, that's the way it is, glory to God. God intends on us helping one another. Amen. When we're hungry or thirsty or sick or even, or even when we're in prison. Amen. When we get put, when we get, put, I believe Jesus walked on this earth today. Amen. If Jesus came to Fort Bank, if Jesus came to your area, where do you think he would go? Amen. Where do you think Jesus would go if he was walking down the streets of Fort Payne or, or your area? Amen. I believe Jesus, I believe you'd be surprised where Jesus would go. Amen. I believe you'd be real surprised because I believe Jesus would go where the lost people are. Amen. Now let's think about it. I believe Jesus would go where the lost people are. Amen. And, 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 and I think he would go. I believe, I believe that uh, uh, you'd be surprised. Because I believe he'd go down there where people need him. And I believe he'd go down to the jail too. Don't you? I believe he'd go down there to jail where, where, where people really need him. Because them people need him just like everybody else does. Hey man, I believe Jesus would go to the jail. A lot of times people get put in jail and we just throw them away because they've got put in jail. We just give up on them. Hey man, we, we figure, well, they're in jail. They've done something wrong. They're bad people because they're in jail. Yeah. That, God still loves them people, amen. God still loves them people just like he does you walking out here on the street, amen. He still wants them people to be saved just like he wants me and you to be saved right out here on the street. Yes, he does. They have just messed up and they're in jail, amen. We mess up every day, amen. I mess up every day, Brother Larry. Glory to God, I just do. That's just the way it is. But we got to get Jesus, amen. When we get Jesus in our life, he's right there to help us out, amen. God wants everybody to be saved. Or you're in prison, or you're in jail, or you're out here on the streets. It don't matter where you're at. God wants everybody to be saved. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 2 and 3, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, yeah. our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of of the truth, amen. That tells us right there, that, that's Bible right there saying that God wants everybody to be saved, amen. Jesus said when we pray, the word prayer means to utter or address a petition to God, amen. That, when we pray, we got to utter or, utter or address a petition to God, amen. That's what we're doing. In other words, we're talking to God, amen. That's what we're doing, glory to God. When we're talking to God, not to be like the hypocrites. They loved to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets so they could be seen by men. Here we are right back at that, amen? So they could be seen by men. That's their reward, amen? That's what they get. That's their reward so they can be seen by men because God's not going to give them a reward, amen, in heaven. That's all they get. The reward will be right here on this, on this earth and not in heaven, amen? Uh -huh. Jesus said when, when you pray... Enter into your closet, amen, and when you shut the door, pray to the Father, glory to God. Glory to God, and I, I, I don't really think you necessarily have to go in a closet, glory to God. I think if you just get alone with God, amen, it's not talking about a box where you open the door and go in and shut the box. Glory to God, I believe it's talking about when you get in your heart, you get purposed in your heart, glory to God, and you get it there, and you start praying, and you get alone with God, amen. I believe that's what he's talking about. Jesus said, pray to the Father in secret, and the Father will reward you openly. Amen? Openly. He said, forgive us our debts, and we forgive our debtors. Amen? In other words, we're, we're going to ask God to forgive us of our debts. Amen? And we should forgive our debtors. Amen? We owe God a debt we can't pay back. Now, now, let's just think about that. We owe God a debt we can't never pay back. He sent his only begotten son yep. to yes, die yes. on the cross right here for us, Whoa. for all of us. And that word all gets everybody here, amen. amen. Every one of us, amen. Glory to God. That's all of us. Not just you or not just me or not just, just anybody else, amen. But for all of us, amen. Glory to God. Jesus was teaching them how to pray, and he said, don't pray with vain repetitions. Yep. Amen. He said, your father knows what you need before you ask him. Amen. My brother was on that already just a minute ago. Yeah. Glory to God. He already knows before you ask him what you need. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. He said, pray in this manner. Our father, which art in heaven. Oh, yeah, glory. 
Glory to God. We have an earthly father and we an earthly dad. Amen. We have an earthly father, but our heavenly father is the answer to everything we need. Amen. He's the answer to all of our problems. Glory to God. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Glory to God. I love him today and appreciate him. Our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yeah. Hallowed be thy name. Holy be thy name. Amen. Sanctified be thy name. Glory to God. Amen. Be thy name. The kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Glory to God. God will provide for us. Amen. What we need. God will take care of us day by day. Amen. He takes care of us every day. The children of Israel wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. Amen. 40 years. They got hungry. God fed a manna right out of heaven. Amen. God sent a manna right out of heaven. Amen. Because they was in the desert and they couldn't feed themselves, but God took care of them. He sent a manna right out of heaven. Amen. When they got thirsty, glory to God, they had water. Amen. Moses smoked the rock and out come the water. Amen. God just took care of them. And that's the way, that's the way God will do us. Amen. Even though they rebelled against him. Even though they done stuff against him and, and, and didn't do right, amen, God still fed them. God still gave them water. God still took care of them, just like he will me and you today, amen. God will take care of us, amen. He'll provide, he provides for us every day, day by day by day by day, amen. God takes care of us, amen. Jesus wants to help. Jesus wants us to help one another. Amen. He might be using he might be using you to help someone just a little less fortunate than you. Amen. That's that's how God takes care of his children by using another one of his children to help this child. Amen. That's the way he takes care of us. Amen. By by us helping each other out. Amen. Jesus said we should help one another and not brag about it. Amen. Amen. We should we should do it to not be seen by men. Jesus said, go in your closet and pray. Get alone with God. Amen. That's what we have to do. We have to get alone with God and pray right out of our hearts. Amen. Don't pray because so-and-so hears you saying this big prayer that's a great prayer. And, and you can say all these big words. God wants you to talk to him right out of your heart. Amen. Yeah. God wants him to tell you right out of your heart yeah. what you need. Amen. Glory to, Glory to God. And he'll be right there for you. Amen. Jesus Jesus said, go in your closet and shut the door and talk to God. Amen. That's what we got to do. Glory to God. I love you today, and I hope something said. I hope if you're not saved today, oh, glory to God, that you'll get down on your knees right now yeah. and ask God in your life. Amen. Because that's the most important thing you could ever do. You can put everything else aside because that's what you need to do right now if you're not saved. Amen. Oh, glory to God. I love the Lord today. Now worship with tradition as they sing a song. Just a carpenter, you say. Well, let me tell you what he's been in plain view for all to see at a place called Calvary's Hill on a cross made from a tree with just three. Jesus built a bridge to heaven and saved my dying soul from hell. Not a tool in his hand, just love in his heart. He knew that he would die there, right 
tradition. Boy, I'm telling you what, son, it's hotter than a depot stove up here. I wish y'all was here in the studio. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is moving in this building right now. Oh, yeah. The Word of God is going forth. You understand? It's the true living Word of God that's being preached up yeah, here. Right. It's the gospel. Oh. You want to take a pill, take a gospel. Yeah. If you need joy and rest and peace and comfort, I've told you before, it's all I know to do to tell you. Get in the Word. Rightly divide the word. Yeah. Let that word sink in your heart. Let it. You see, the word of God, it's a seed. I've told you this before. Listen, when that word gets in you and it gets around your heart, it, it attaches itself to you. It intermingles, intertwines, and gets interlaced in you. You ever tried to pull a vine out of the garden? You say, well, I can't pull the vine out of the garden. If I do, I'll tear up my tomato plants. Yeah. You can't pull that word out of you. It'll tear you up. That's how, that, that's how you want that word just laced, in, interlaced, intermingled in you. Where it just becomes a part of you. It has to. It has to be a da our daily life. When you get up in the morning, the first thing out of your mouth ought to be, Thank you, God. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice in it. You understand? You've got a choice. I chose when I woke up this morning, God gave me another day. I chose to get up and praise and worship him and get in his word. I chose to get in my truck and drive over here and do this taping. Yes, yes, I chose to get up, and when I, and I didn't choose to get up. God got me up, but after that, I chose to get up and say, you know what, I'm going to make it a good day in Jesus' name, whether they like it or not. Yes, yes. We're going to live for God. We're going to do for God. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. If you're ashamed of him, you know what the word says. He, basically, let me tell you in a nutshell, he said, if you're ashamed of me, I, I'll be ashamed of you. Yeah. If you don't honor and recognize me on this earth, I won't turn to my Father and honor and recognize you. But if you'll open up your mouth on this earth and begin to preach and teach and tell people about Jesus and get in the word, let me tell you what Jesus is doing. Oh, yeah. He's on the right hand of the Father, and he turns and he says, Father, I want you to look at Brother Ricky. I want you to look at Brother Ronnie. Yeah, I, want, I want you to look at Brother John Smith or whoever it is. They're talking about me, Lord. They're confessing me yeah. as their Savior, Lord. and they're doing their best yeah. to get other people uh -huh. to get born Lord. again. Lord, I'm asking that you bless them. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Lord says, angels, come over here. Do you hear what Jesus said? Yes, sir. Handle it. That's what happens. Let me just tell you what happens in the, in the, in the, in the supernatural world. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. Glory to God. Now go with me to uh, see 2 Timothy chapter 2. Going to read a couple of verses here. 2 Timothy 2 says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in, Jesus, that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses... The same thing commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. In other words, 
the gospel that I've preached to you, take it and preach it to others is what he's telling them. Verse 3, this is where I'm headed. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Listen, I, don't, I will never get up here and talk politics, but I don't have to tell y'all. This world's in a bad way. This country's in a bad way. There's bad things happening. But we must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We must not faint. We must always pray and stand Everybody. firm in the yes, word. It don't matter what somebody says over there. If they say it and it don't line up with the word of God, it's wrong. Right. Amen. It's not that they're liars because they just don't know. Right. Come on, liar. You see, a liar is somebody that knows the truth but doesn't say the truth. They say something else. Yeah. If someone doesn't know, they're blinded in their hearts and in their minds, then what they think to be the truth, that's what they think to be the truth. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. There is a war going on. Yes, we are soldiers in the yeah, body. Amen. You know, yeah, I know we've all seen pictures or, or parts of a movie. And I'm going to get there in a minute, but I'm going to set the scene for you. You ever seen these guys in the futuristic outfits? They got lasers shooting off their shoulder. And they got these big old weapons and they got big old heavy duty looking futuristic armor. Bullets and lasers just to bouncing off of them. Remember what I just said. Now flip over the next few pages to uh, Philippians 2 and 25. Paul's talking. Philippians 2, verse 25. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion and laborer and fellow soldier. You see, the Bible says it once and then says it twice, and it's, there's another place in there where it talks about being a soldier. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor, and my fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. Epaphroditus was kind of like he followed around and he helped the Apostle Paul, and the Apostle Paul trusted this man enough to send him on down and knowing he would do what he's been called to do. But, he, but it's interesting that Paul called him a fellow soldier. Now, I'm setting the stage for something here, okay? Now, I'm going backwards kind of from the right side of the Bible to the left because, you know, God wants us to go back. He's taking us back to the garden, y'all. Yeah, come on. We're going back to the very garden of Eden, only it's going to be in heaven, and it's going to be a lot more beautiful than that. But God's taking us back to the garden. He said, I'll restore the end to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now, Couple pages over. Y'all ought to know where I'm going by now. Go to Ephesians 6. We're going to start in verse 10. Let me just get started. I love the Lord. I'm yes, telling you what, I love this Lord word. God. I can't get enough of the word. It... <laughs> Children, obey your parents. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me go down here. I'm getting ahead of myself. Forgive me. Ephesians chapter 6, start in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord uh -huh. and in the power of his might. You understand? If you're a soldier, in an army, you've got to be strong. You've got to keep your, they, them soldiers work out and they exercise yes. and they take care of their equipment. Yeah. You understand? They take care of their bodies. They're, they are aware of their fighting utensils. They're aware of the body armor that they put on there. They know what that gun can do. Uh -huh. You know them fellas train? They get trained enough where they could sit there in pitch black and take that gun apart and put it back together. In pitch black in the closet, like ain't a drop of light in there. That's how well they train. They're soldiers. That's how we ought to be as soldiers in this oh, word. Yes, We've are. got to be quick to deliver scripture. You something rise up, and I'm gonna tell you, it'll show up because it happened to me, and it happens to all of us. There's times that, that situations will show up. You ain't got time to get in the Bible and find a scripture. Uh -huh. You better have your scripture ready. You tried. You better have it. You better have that gun loaded and ready to go. Amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that He, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. If we were not soldiers, He would not have told us to put on armor. Yeah, right. Only a soldier puts on armor, and I tell you, I tell you again, a soldier takes care of its armor. This here is part of your armor. 
You need to take care of this and make sure you know where this is at all times. Don't you let dust get on this thing. If anything, you ought to have foot, uh, fingerprints on every page. Yeah. It ought to be wore out, tore out. You ought to have to get you a Bible every two or three years. Yeah, amen. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I preached this before, but the time that we're living in now causes me to do it again. Listen, we're not fighting each other. We're not fighting people of different color and people of different race. I'm not fighting people overseas. The, the, the uh, ISIS, all those kind of folks over there, I'm not fighting them. Do you understand there's a power and a principality that I've been called to fight against because I've been called a soldier of the Most High God. I've been called a soldier to put on armor. Yeah, yeah, they might. And my armor is a spiritual armor. Yeah, Everything yeah, he might. tells us here in Ephesians 6, starting in verse 10, is spiritual armor. Now let me flip a page here. Ephesians 6, chapter 13, uh, chapter 6, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand. Yeah. Let me tell you how to stand. You stand with your feet firmly planted and your shoulders squared with the word of God in your hand and that shield and that sword shod with the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel ready to go. Yeah. We ought to be like minute men ready yeah. to go in a moment's yeah. notice. Somebody calls you and said, I need help. Yes, sir. Let me get on my knees first and then I'll be there. Therein lies the battleground. Go to the Lord in prayer, taking your armor with you when you get up and go. Put your armor on before you walk out the door. Yeah, love that guy. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all stand. Verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Woo! Yeah. You, know what you, you know what he said? Tighten your belt, son. Pull your britches up. Tighten yeah. your spiritual oh, belt. Lord. Get it right. Lord. Get them britches ready. Lord. Get your shirt on. Get yourself ready to go. Come on, we've got a war to yeah. fight. Yeah. And we fight that war on our knees. Yeah. And we fight that war with our mouth. Yeah. There's, your, there's your gun right there. There's your gun right here. Your bullets are in here. Okay. Right. You put this here. Load this, these are the bullets. You load this magazine in here, and you shoot them right out of this barrel. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Let me read that verse in the Amplified Bible. Listen to this. Stand there, this verse 14, Ephesians 6. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, and having put on the, the breastplate of integrity yeah. and of a moral rectitude and right standing with God. You see, in, in today, if you don't stay close to God, you'll drift. Yeah, you will. right. There's so much false doctrine being preached out there today, it, and it's not in the pulpit, and it is in the pulpit. It's out there in the street. People are preaching a doctrine that, folks wouldn't normally call a doctrine. Everybody's got one. And a doctrine is just what you follow. It's what yeah. you believe in. It's what you adhere to and rely on and trust in. Yeah. And there's doctrine being preached in the street, in Congress, in schools, in the cafes, roadside diners, in the mechanic shop, in the welding shop, yes, sir. Yeah. in the blue collar. There's doctrine being preached, you understand? It is our job that's why you put that armor on. So you withstand the wiles of the devil and them fiery darts because yeah. the devil is shooting fiery darts 24-7. Yes, and if you put on and keep on that whole armor, they'll bounce off, just like I told you about them movies. And blazers and bullets just bounce off, and that soldier just keeps coming. And he keeps coming, boy. And he, keep, and he ain't stopped because yeah. he's got something better than what they've got. I got news for you. We've got something better than what they've got. Yes, sir. We have laid hold of eternal life. Do you understand? 
What we have is eternal. Yeah. Jesus said he's from everlasting to everlasting. Now let me tell you something about that. From everlasting to everlasting. You know what that means? That means, first of all, this everlasting has to get done. Then you can go to this everlasting. Let me tell you something. This everlasting is never going to stop. From everlasting to everlasting. From now on. I want you to go to heaven with me. I yes, want sir. you to be in yeah. heaven with me. When yeah. we get to heaven, I want to see you and know you for who you are and what you really look like. Beaming with the blood of Jesus, got the glory of God on you, walking around praising the Most High God, raising your hands and rejoicing. And oh, I feel like running nine miles. I'm telling you what. Listen, the glory of God is in this house, and I want the glory of God to be on you. I want to see you saved and healed, born again. I come here today to build you up, stir you up, cheer you up, and lift you up in the name of Jesus. He's our God, there ain't none like him. If you'll follow Jesus and follow the thing that good is, you will have, the Bible says you'll have great success, not just success, but great success. That's what the word says. He said, if you, basically, let me just tell you, if he said, if you'll get born again and do what I say, you'll have great success. Now, I like success, everybody does. But you imagine you have great, you have success and then you have great success. Put on the whole armor of God. We're soldiers in this war. Tighten up your belt. You ain't got we don't if you want to have a pity party, one, two, three. Okay, we're done. Come on, let's go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We ain't got you ain't got time for no pity party. A pity party will knock you down. That's the devil keeping you down, and he's got his thumb on you. I got news for you. My foot is on his neck. He don't squeak unless I tell him to squeak. And I ain't going to tell him to squeak. Bless God. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation. You see, that salvation, it's mine. That's why I said take the helmet of salvation. Put on your salvation. Know that you're born again yes. always. You know, when they put that plaited thorn of crowns on Jesus' head, they knocked it down there. Them thorns pierced the skin, pierced the skull, pierced the brain. Jesus fixed the brain. He fixed your mind. He said, look, think on these things because they got into my... That's why I ain't got time to go in there. But they pierced his head, his skull, and got into his brain so we could have a mind of Christ. He got in there and fixed that too. When he went to the cross, fixed everything. Yep. When he said, it is finished, that word it is the biggest di uh, biblical definition that you'll ever find. It is finished, everything is finished. Take your helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Been telling you that forever. Take the sword of of the spirit which is the word of God. Take the word of God. Yeah, come on. Verse 18. I think I'm done after this one. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Uh -huh. Let me just tell you. You want to pray in the spirit? Go read Acts 2. It'll tell you to pray in the spirit. Enough of that. Yeah. Which is the word of God. Praying always all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Oh. Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. With all perseverance. You, we are soldiers in the army of God. Yes. It is time to act like a soldier. Yes, it is time to rise up, take this word, take these bullets, and fire that gun. Yeah. Glory to God. Fire that gun. Load it. Fire it. Mean it. Aim it. Shoot it. Amen. Guys, y'all worship with Paul and creation. Like I told you before, you worship God like ain't nobody around. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus, use me. Oh, Lord, don't refuse me. Surely there's a work that I can do. Even though it's humble, help my will to crumble. Though the
cost be great, I work for you. I'll stand for thee, dear Jesus, though death may come my way. I'll spread the gospel to the fallen. Across the sea, please help me to be willing to say yes. Jesus, use me. Oh Lord, don't refuse me. Surely there's a work that I can do. Cost be great, I work for you. He's the lily of the valley, he's the bright and morning star, he's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. the beautiful rose of Sharon oh he's all the world to me but best of all he is my coming king Jesus use me oh Lord don't refuse me surely there's a you Paula new creation I appreciate that appreciate that singing appreciate brother Larry amen I tell you what I I, pre, I enjoyed that message yeah. glory be to the Lamb of God I've got my armor on amen, amen. I've got my armor on I got my ammunition brother Larry it's right here amen got that ammunition ready to shoot that ammunition at the devil amen. I believe that's just what I'll do too amen praise if you got your Bibles and I know you do I know you got them with you I want you to turn to James I want you to turn to James uh, chapter 1, James chapter 1, I want to start reading in verse 12. James chapter 1 and verse 12, and the Bible says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, When he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man, when he is tempted, when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed, and when, ha and when lust hath conceived it, bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, which whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. James said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. My friend, let me tell you something down here on this earth, and while we live here, we're going to have temptations. We're going to have problems, and we're going to have troubles. But he said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, because whenever that, but that whenever you've gone through them temptations, and whenever you've come through and you've been tried, you know that we're always tried, Brother Larry. We're tried by the fire, and whenever we're tried, and we come out like gold, amen, we come out. The Bible says that we've got that crown of life, amen, we've got that life, amen, that we 
got for more abundant life and all that life that Jesus said he come that we might have that whenever we the blessed is that man that endured that temptation my friend they're going to be temptation they're going to be problems yeah. they're going to be trouble but my friend I got good news for you today yeah. amen God done with and he, he done sent his son down here and he made us a way of escape oh, he said for with every temptation he said I'll make you a way of escape he said I'll make you a way to get out of it friend sometimes the tunnel looks like that you just can't see the light yeah. it is so dark in there that you just can't see the end of the tunnel but my friend let me tell you something you just hang on you hang on to God because my friend one of these days you're going to see that light you're going to begin to see the glimpse of that little old bitty light right there one of these days you're going to say what is that oh it's a glimpse of the light who's the light Jesus Christ the righteous Jesus Christ the son of the almighty God I'm talking about the one that came and died on that cross for us and he made us life and he gave us life glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah! Glory, praise be to the Lamb of God, friend. He said, "Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tempted, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love Him." Let no man say, "When he is tempted, I am tempted of God." God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away from his... Whoa, wait a minute now. It's when we get our eyes off of Jesus. It's when these minds, Brother Larry, that you was talking about whenever... That, when we don't keep it in the Word of God and we don't let Jesus... He said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. But the problem is, is we got everything in our minds except Jesus. We got everything in our minds except the Word of God because we got... Oh, we got the Internet. We got the television. We got the radio. We got all this. We got this thing over here we go do. We got that over there we go. It's all of the world. None of it's of God, amen, because we just keep cramming that stuff on the inside of us. We just keep cramming that thing in our mind, my friend and my friend. You will be what you do. Amen. You will do what you are. Amen. And my friend, let me tell you something. If you don't if you don't fill that mind up with the Word of God, if you fill that mind up with the world and with all the things of this world, that's the way you'll think. The Bible says, as a man thinks of others, so is he. Amen. My friend, let me say you something. Are you thinking of the righteous things? Are you thinking on Jesus Christ, the righteous? Jesus Christ. Christ, the word of God, the things that will help you today is Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Now, I, wouldn't, I didn't say that about the television and the, about the TV and all that stuff for you to quit watching it. I'm not telling. I'm not saying you shouldn't watch TV. I'm just saying you, that thing got a knob on it. Yeah. Hey Amen. That thing you got that remote. You can turn that channel to the channel where there's some good old Christian stuff going yeah. on. Hey Amen. Right. You can turn that channel to the channel where there's somebody are saying something about God, oh. where they're praising the Lord God Almighty, my friend. Instead of just filling that mind up with the world, fill that mind up with what does set the word of God. God with what, amen. Hey, man, if they're preaching the word of God, it's the word of God. I mean, let me tell you, say, oh, brother Ronnie, I don't believe in that church over there. I don't believe in what they are. My friend, if they're preaching you the word of God, you just apply that word to your life. Don't you worry about what religion it is. Don't worry about whether they're uh, this or they're whether they're that. Hey, my, my friend, let me tell you something. You worry about whether they're preaching you the word of God. And if they're preaching you the word of God, you get in that word and you let that word get on the inside out of you and you apply it to your everyday life. Glory be to the Lamb of God. No matter who's preaching it. Come on now. It don't matter who's preaching it. What it matters is are you receiving it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You don't have to receive the man. Amen. A drunk man can preach you the word. God will honor his word. Yeah, he will. Oh, brother, I disagree with you on that. You better not. Because it's the word of God that goes forward. It don't matter if it come out of a drunk man. It don't matter if it come out of a drug addict. It don't matter where it come from if it's the word of God. Now, God won't honor that man. God won't honor that person that did it. But I'll guarantee you one thing. He said his word would not go void. If you're teaching God's word, if you're saying God's word, if God's word's coming out of your mouth, that word will be anointed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. You see, it's the things that we want to fill our minds up with. It's the things that we want. Amen. It's the things that we put in our mind. And you say, Brother Ronnie, oh, I'm religious. Oh, I, I, got, I got Jesus and I know Jesus got all these things and I know how Jesus works and all of this. Let me tell you something my friend. If you're not filling your mind up with Jesus Glory! If you're not filling your mind up with that good old sweet Holy Ghost, glory be to the Lamb of God. If you're not filling your mind up with what thus saith the Word of God, you're putting that garbage that's in this world in your mind. And my friend, you'll not think nothing about the Word of God and you'll not be living for Jesus. Oh yeah, Brother Ronnie, I live for Jesus. If you're not doing what the Word of God says, you're not living for Jesus. Come on. Come on. Glory to the Lamb of God. Friend, that's just the way it is. I can't change it. It's the word of God. The only one that can change it is God. And God says, I change not. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of God. You see, Satan tips us through our minds. He works on our mind. You say, I don't believe that. Satan beguiled Eve. Now, I want you to listen to something right here. This was in the beginning. This was at the first of it whenever God first made the world. He said, and now the serpent was more subtle than any beast in the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, he said, yea, hath God said, you shall not, not eat of every tree of the garden. Now something I, want to, uh, something I want to get across to you right here. The first thing Satan done was is he showed her something. The first thing he done was is he brought it to her mind. Oh, you got all this fruit to eat. Look at all this fruit, you all these trees that you got. He brought it to her mind. But he said, did God not say that you can eat all of these fruits? She said, no, nah, you can't eat all of them. She said, there's one of them that we can't eat of. He said, yeah, but did God not say you could eat of all? You see, he's a working on our mind. Yeah. He already got our mind set. Oh, look over that, that tree that you can't have. Did you notice that we always want what we can't have? Yes, sir. Hello? Yeah, we do. If we can't have it, we want it. Amen. She looked over there at that tree and, oh, Satan, he, he done got in her mind. See, he done, he done work with her. He, he works on you like that. He done worked on her. He done got in there and he done, he done got in that mind. He done showed her all that fruit. He said, oh, don't that fruit look good? Oh, God, you see, the reason God don't want you to eat that fruit because whenever you eat that fruit, you'll become a God just like he is and then you'll know good and evil. You see, he also told her just enough truth he told her the truth right there, but he didn't tell her a lie. He told her the truth. He tells you just enough truth to get you over there, to get you thinking in your mind. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, God said I could do that. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, God said that, that, that I could do that. Yeah, he tells you, just, oh, Satan tells you just enough to get you in it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And then he lets you suffer the consequences. He said, the woman said unto him, unto the serpent, we may eat of all the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. Yeah. Now he's going to lie to her. Yeah. Right here he's going to lie to her. He said, oh no. He said, no, you won't die. He said, you surely will not die. Uh, Glory to God. Listen to me. Satan's a liar and he's the father of lies. Yeah. He is the lie. Amen. He has made up the lies. He's got all the lies. He's the father of the lies. And if Satan told it to you, it's a lie. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All things, all good gifts come from above. All this other stuff comes from Satan, comes from the devil. Amen. Comes from the world. He said, he said, oh, you surely will not die. But the fruit of the tree which is on the midst of the garden, God hath said, you shall not eat. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that when the day, of the, the, when the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall, see God, you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yeah. He first, lied, first thing he done was he got her mind set. 
That's the first thing the devil will do to you. He'll get your mind. And you know how he does that? He gets you on them old TV movies. He gets you on them old, old videos. Uh, he gets you on all them old, uh, uh, all them old movies and things that, that's of the devil and people killing people and, and this and the doing that uh, and that one to do that. All these things. He gets your mindset. First thing he does is he gets your mindset. He gets you into all that. He gets you talked into. You see, it don't take much. All he got to do is entice you a little, just like he did the woman here. All he had to do was entice her a little bit and our, and our old human minds would. You see, without God, we can do nothing. The problem is the thing that we don't realize is that if we don't have God and if we don't have the mind of Christ, if the Jesus, that's why he said, but, but this mind which is in me, in you, amen, we got to have the mind of Christ. If we don't have the mind of Christ, we can't fight the devil. He can come in there and he'll deceive us. He'll beguile us and he'll make us think that what we're doing is good. He'll make us think that what we're doing is just what God wants you to do. And he'll make you think you're living on the righteous road. But my friend, that the whole time he's taking you right straight to hell. But my friend, I got good news for you, my friend, right now. If we'll just get in the book, if we'll just get in the word of God, God shows us the way. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. He'll show you the way. Yes, he will. He shows us the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man coming to the Father except by me, friend. It takes the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, he beguiled Eve. He went on down through there, and whenever the story, as the story ends, he went, God come to, uh, God come to the woman, and he, and he, and he said, uh, he said, why, why have you done this? She said, well, that serpent beguiled me the serpent beguiled her you see beguile means to lead by deception it means to deceive you to make you think whenever and what what he did was he got in her mind and when when satan gets in your mind and he leads you away over here in our text whenever that whenever he it says and then when lust hath conceived when he gets in your mind and then you thought on that for just a long enough you thought on that just long enough that then whenever it begins you begin to lust after it you begin to want it you begin to oh yeah it's all right i can take that i can do that i can do that those things because it'll be all all right, God will forgive me, or God don't care if I do all these things. He said, "Big it brings forth sin. Yes. Glory be to the Lamb of God. And then he said, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You cannot make it, Brother Larry, with sin in your life. Come on now. You cannot make it with sin in your life. You can say, well, Brother Ronnie, I can do this and I can do that. Why you want to live like that? Why you want to live on the edge? Why you want to live where, well, I believe I can do this and I, I don't believe the Lord to hold this again. But let me tell you something. Get in the book. Get in the Word of God. God will show you how you need to live and there'll be no question about it. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Yep, yeah, man. Praise the Lord. I'm glad today to know. Hallelujah. That I've got the Word of God. Amen. That I can go to the Word of God. If there's a question about how I'm you know what? There won't be no question about how you live it anyway. Because if you get in the Word, if you get Jesus and you get the Holy Ghost of God, you get filled up with the Holy Ghost, you won't have to worry about it. Jesus said, I got, it's expedient that I go away, but if I go away, I'll send you another comforter, yeah. which is the Holy Ghost, which will lead you and guide you and teach you yeah. through all truth. Glory to God. Amen. Who's the truth? Jesus Christ. Glory to God. He's the truth. Friend, let me tell you something. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I urge you to find you an altar. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and let Jesus on the inside. Friend, until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you. Hallelujah.